Hey y'all, it's Anna B, and today I'm going to be telling you all about my YAGP experience, aka the truth about this whole thing. Basically, I have participated in YAGP for the last three years, and so I feel like this should make me decently qualified to kind of give you the rundown on all of this. But if you're watching this video, I'm assuming it's probably because it's that time of year where your teachers, number one, are either asking you if you want to actually participate in it and you don't know what to do, or you're trying to choose your variation, or you're trying to convince your parents that this is a good idea and it's worth the money. I don't know. I just hope that I, today I can answer all of your questions for you. I will be honest, I don't have a set bulleted plan for this video, so this might be all over the place. But I hope that whatever words uh, spit out of my mouth can be helpful for you. And if I leave any questions unanswered that you have, please, 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 please leave them in the comments below because I'm pretty sure that I will be able to answer them for you. So without further ado, here is my YAGP experience and the truth about this whole thing. So basically, like I already kind of said, I've participated in YAGP the last three years now. I've done the Chicago location in the February of 2020. And then I did Indianapolis in March of 2021. And then I did Boston this last spring, um, or I guess winter in February of 2022. The first big tip I have to tell you with this is it doesn't really matter where you go. Um, you're gonna get pretty much the same array of judges. I mean, they rotate through the same few at pretty much every competition. It's gonna be pretty much the same experience no matter where you go. Um, you're still gonna get to perform. Pretty much all the locations are in beautiful theaters. So if that's something you're really looking for, um, I will say Boston has been my favorite so far that I've done. Um, Chicago was a little small. Um, it was my first year though, so it was, it was a good experience. Otherwise, um, I would really recommend Boston. If you're gonna fly anywhere, fly to the Boston one. It was great. The competition was pretty good, but it wasn't like too hard. If you get the chance to go with your studio, I would highly recommend it. But if you're just going by yourself or as an independent, don't be scared whatsoever because that's kind of what I did the last two years. Um, it just didn't work out where um, I was able to go with the rest of my studio. And so I just went to a different location and was basically there by myself. I didn't even have an instructor there these last two times. And like, I'll be completely honest with you, I did really well with that just because I felt less pressure. I felt very independent. I felt like I was just doing it for myself and it was really a great experience. But if you're a social person and you like your friends and you like your teachers, I think a first experience is really good to have with other people because you kind of don't know what to expect yet. Once you know what to expect, then it's pretty easy to just say like, oh, I'll just enter independent this year. So that's something I'd completely recommend. But as a first year, I would definitely recommend going with a studio or at least with a teacher or some instructor of sorts who knows the rundown and knows what's going on. Next thing is choosing your variation and choosing your dances. I think that for me, it's really important to have a good balance when you're picking your variation, whether your teacher picks it or you get to help have input in that decision to um, make sure you're challenging yourself enough, but not to the point where like, it's gonna get past that five months of rehearsal and you get there and you're like, ah, I still can't do this section. Why did I pick this variation? It's way too hard for me. You don't wanna put yourself in that position. So I definitely recommend going into it with, okay, I know I can do this. I can add a few things here and there to make it more challenging if it gets, you know, if I get better and better at, at it. I think that that's a great way to approach choosing your variation. At the end of the day, you really just wanna make sure that you're choosing a variation that you feel comfortable in and you know you can perform at your best and that you and your instructors feel comfortable having you do. Now, aside from the classical variations, I highly, highly recommend you also do a contemporary. I didn't do a contemporary my first year and I like regret it with every bone in my body. Going there and watching everyone do their contemporaries, I was like, oh, that looks so fun. I would have got to meet so many more people. I would have got to just be in front of the judges more. And I think that that's super helpful when you've done your contemporary or classical and you leave that impression on the judges and then you come back out to do either your contemporary or classical, whichever one you haven't done yet. The judges are like, oh yeah, I remember her. Oh, okay. And so I think that it just gives you more exposure and you're more likely to do a little bit better or score a little bit higher on whichever piece you do second because the judges have already seen you. Plus doing contemporary is just really fun and I know for me I love contemporary and I just don't get to do it a whole lot at my home studio and so um, especially this last year I got to choreograph my own contemporary piece and it was a lot of fun. So like just do it if you're questioning you know oh I'll well, just do classical just because you know, I don't want to do anything too crazy yet. And I just want to test the water. Like, no, you should totally do a contemporary. I'm telling you now, you won't regret it. Do something your future self will thank you for. That is something I live by. So I highly, highly, highly recommend, even if you're new to contemporary and don't really do contemporary that much, go for it because 
there's no time like the present to learn and then when you go to do it next year you will already have experience and you'll know what to expect and it'll all just be so much better now i do just want to touch on really getting into the truth about yagp aside from just picking where you're gonna go and doing your dance and doing all the rehearsals and everything there is a side to yagp that i think can be kind of self-deprecating for a lot of people um, I think that a lot of people kind of struggle to understand the culture of YAGP or really just aren't ready for the culture shock that you're going to get when you go to YAGP and experience being around so many other dancers who have the same body insecurities, who have the same nerves, the same very similar um, performance experiences. I think that the number one mindset to go in when you go to YAGP is that everyone Everyone is going to be nervous. Everyone's going to be judging themselves. Everyone's going to be judging others. Everyone is in the same boat at this place. And you shouldn't let that take away from your own experience. If someone else is being, you know, kind of rude backstage or something, just know that they're probably dealing with their own things and just ignore it and worry about yourself. I also think that it's super important to go into YAGP with the mindset of, I'm not going to win. <laughs> I will tell you from personal experience, I've done this for three years now and I've never even placed in the top 24 and I would consider myself to be a pretty decent dancer. Though as much of like a shock that has been to me in the years past, I think that I score better and I ultimately feel better walking away from the experience if I'm not focused on winning or placing in the top 12 or top 24. If I'm just focused on putting out a good performance for myself and leaving an impression on the judges and just ultimately doing my best on stage to make me feel my best I walk away from the competition feeling so much better about myself I have this thing that I like to say high hopes and low expectations especially when it comes to YAGP I just feel like if you walk in there and you're like I really would love to win but I'm gonna be okay if I don't I think that's really important and just remember to be happy for the people who do win even if they're the ones who you're like oh if I was just born that skinny or had that perfect defeat like don't let yourself do that. Just be happy with the performance that you gave because it is such an incredible experience to get to meet new dancers and to get to perform a solo, like pretend that you're a principal in a company or something like that for a day. It's a lot of fun and it is such a great learning experience. And even this third year when I was out in Boston, I still was learning so many new things. So I think that YGP, I would completely recommend to anyone as long as you're able to kind of understand before you walk in what the culture is going to be like. I do also just want to say like a little disclaimer. I'm not someone who really supports the culture of YAGP. I really think that the way that they place dancers and the way that they kind of use their Instagram platforms and things like that is very unhealthy. I think that they only really like to share um, dancers who have the perfect bodies, the perfect feet. I'm not a huge supporter of that, and when I say I think that YAGP is a great experience for everyone, I really just think that YAGP is a great learning experience for um, people just because it throws you in a situation where you're going to face things that are going to challenge your self-confidence, and to be able to push through it and say, you know what, I'm doing this for me, I'm doing this because dance is what I love to do, and I'm not worried about placing or anything like that. Being able to walk in there and walk out being the girl who's like super positive and making the experience good for the dancers around her. I That's that's the culture of YAGP that I support. A lot of us, I feel like, especially if we've never really done anything outside of our home studios, it can be like a total culture shock and you're going to be like, whoa, I've like seen this on Instagram or like heard about people doing this or maybe I've even seen that person on Instagram before and actually throwing yourself into the ballet world like that is super crazy and I've enjoyed it every single time. I think that's mainly one of the things that I enjoy most is just putting myself into the ballet world for for real actually because I don't get the chance to do that very often and hopefully I didn't like kill your spirits too much it's not about your body it's not about your self-image it's about your confidence on stage it's about your performance it's about your artistry go out there and do it for yourself it's gonna be a lot of hard work to get there and you're probably gonna question why the heck you're doing it multiple times throughout the process but it's just something that I think that every dancer who wants to be serious about ballet should really get, put themselves into, just like I said, because of that exposure it gives you to the real ballet world. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed and found this informational, and I will see you guys in another video. Bye!